Back at Australia's Institute for Molecular Bioscience in Queensland, Mark Norman is about to find out if the colorful flamboyant cuttlefish is truly poisonous or just a poser. That's what I was looking at. Toxicity is really rare in these sorts of animals. There's thousands of species of octopus, squid and cuttlefish and in all the world there's only blurring octopuses and just recently the little striped pyjama squid are the only ones that are known to be, to be poisonous, to be very deadly. And so trying to understand the behaviour of this strange little cuttlefish, I think it's really important that we find out whether it's pretending to be something else that's dangerous or it itself is dangerous. Toxins could be anywhere from the skin to the inner organs. If the flamboyant's bite is toxic, its saliva will contain the poison, just as in the blue-ringed octopus. But it could also be mixed in with its ink. Mark needs to analyze all body parts. And the results? Well, it turns out the flamboyant cuttlefish is toxic. It's it's as toxic as blue-ringed octopuses, and blue-ringed octopuses have killed humans from their bites. So we've got the first deadly cuttlefish in the world, and it's amazing on a couple of levels. First of all, it's actually poisonous flesh. The muscles themselves are poisonous. So this is the first time that flesh that is deadly has been reported in any of these groups of animals. And secondly, that the toxin itself is not known. It's some completely different class of toxin. And toxins like those could be the key to whole new discoveries for lots of human medical conditions. But beyond any potential medical use, the toxin is exciting to Mark because it helps explain the flamboyant cuttlefish's oversized confidence. This is a fantastic result because it makes sense of what we're seeing in the wild and, and this toxicity, this poisonousness is probably what's underpinning the whole weird behaviour of the animal and the fact that a group of animals that normally swim around or spend a lot of time trying to be camouflaged have become so obvious, have given up swimming, are walking everywhere. It's like a major step towards a whole new line in the evolution of these animals. Evolution means change. So maybe in a few million years, the flamboyant will march on eight legs right onto the beaches. Or the broad club will hypnotize its predators as well as its prey. Perhaps the Australian giants will invent even more daring strategies to outwit their rivals. Cuttlefish are amazing and perplexing creatures. And we're still trying to understand how all this talent evolved. We are testing an animal that's very alien. I mean, it's as close, perhaps, as we're going to get to studying an animal on another planet. And is that exciting? That's very exciting. We do not know how smart or clever a cuttlefish is because every time we go and do a serious bit of field work or a lab experiment, we continue to learn new things about their capabilities for learning or memory or hiding. So I think we have much more to learn. I hope in my 80s and 90s I'm still wandering around underwater with a walking frame following these things around because it'll take a hundred lifetimes to get a handle on these animals. Cuttlefish continue to dazzle with their outward displays. But exactly what goes on inside their heads will remain for now the real mystery. <laughs>